Big matter. Oh, look how we go. Jungle Nooks just invited me to a live. Let's jump on. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, That's very good. Know. Very good. I still Thanks need to watch those on. Yeah, I still need to watch those videos that you sent. Um, I've had like a really big Code Red case, a uh, reactive dog case that was came up um, and kind of took my whole life away because oh, yeah. he's been a toddler on the face. Yeah, it was fun stuff. Really? Yeah. Was this a colleague that you had in the video I was watching this morning? Is that the no, one you're talking about? No, it's another one. Okay. No, it's, it's another one. I'm getting him. Also, okay. a mini Aussie, though. So yeah. that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's fun. Where, what's the time yeah. over there? Where are you? Where are you even from? I'm in D.C. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. so it's like 10 o'clock at night here. So I should probably log off somewhat soon. Uh, Michelle Black Sullivan saying that she's creating a 30-day business challenge. That's amazing. And she needs to do that. Um, yeah. What time is it there for you? Uh, it's 11.38 in the morning. Oh, so, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost midday. So I'm yeah, just so doing some... <laughs> That makes sense. We're on like yeah, we're, opposite we're, sides of the world right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, cool. Oh, that's cool. Well, like uh, I was watching your live before and um, it's it's definitely uh, interesting to learn more about you than more than just looking at one minute, one minute segments <laughs> of everyone's life. It's very, very yeah. hard to understand. That's why I decided to start doing more lives so people don't think that I'm just the guy that takes the piss out of people and doesn't have any... Uh, Oh, but I like it. Emotions. I like it when you take the piss out of people. Because <laughs> yeah. also you do back it up, and that's yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's, that's what I was talking about with other people. Like, there's there's a bell curve to showing your work, showing like showing your efforts, having the stuff to back up these moments, right? When we're like sitting and talking, because um, yep. you can't obviously be training on camera all day. Like that's just mm -hmm. you're, or if you are, you're not training to the best of your ability. Right. Yeah. Like I've got a lot of dogs where I'm like, yeah, a camera might be on, but it's because I'm recording for my own training footage or for the client or just for mm. me to refine my own, like, like a coach would, I'm yeah. not going to be on live where I want to look at comments. Um, but then there's also people who never post any work and they're like, I've been doing this for 20 years. And I'm like, where's yeah, your yeah, seat? Yeah. Cause, yeah, cause yeah, I'm like, yeah. Cause you're yanking and cranking a dog while you're gesticulating to a, to your client. I was like, mm. if you can't keep your hand still with your gestures, how yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, so. that's right. Well, yeah. tell me a bit about yourself. Tell me a bit about yourself. Like, obviously, I know that you're uh, very well qualified, but um, give me a bit of background. Yeah, yeah so I'm uh, an ethologist, so scientific study of animal behavior. I started working with horses, technically started riding when I was five. I uh, was apprenticing for free riding time. Uh, with dogs and horses at the National Center for Therapeutic Riding when I was 10. Um, and then started getting paid as an apprentice when I was 15. Uh, it's been, what, 33, 34 now. <laughs> so it's been a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went to school for all that stuff. I've worked in South Africa and Cameroon with uh, apex predators for South Africa. And Cameroon was for gorillas and primates. Oh, uh, yeah, and then I've worked at like various zoos, National Institute of Health, different things, working with animals on how they learn, um, improving animal welfare, doing enrichment behavioral management programs. Um, and my thing with dogs is I've always trained dogs along the way, like ever since I started. Um, obviously not when I was in the middle of Cameroon, but like, you know, the rest of the yeah. time. Yeah, um, yeah. And and I'm, I have disabilities. So I was training other people's service dogs. And eventually I was like, this is really convenient. Like, this yeah. is very helpful. Um, and yeah, so I have my own that's in training now, but, um, I run my own training Academy and I've got a few apprentices that I work with. Um, awesome. and yeah, all that, but yeah, I, I basically, I like to say that I'm, that's why I say ethologist is like first, because yeah. I will train any animal. Um, I will do the behavioral management for any animal. I will do enrichment program for any animal, ideally social mammal or social mm. animal. So like I've worked so with social. Give, give, it, give like a two second definition of ethology for the people who are on here watching and don't maybe know what that is. Uh, Someone says hello from the study, yeah, So scientific study of animal behavior. 
So looking mm. at analyzing behavior as a science, as opposed to coming at it from comparing like humans. So behaviorism way back when was humans versus everything else and using kind of mm. everything else, either as a model for humans or humans as like the um, thing that everything else should try to attain to, right? There was that big mm -hmm. dichotomy. Um, ethology actually started more in like the East in like Japan got like a lot of roots um, where because there wasn't like this whole, you know, kind of religious aspect of ethology or of, you know, the human soul, there wasn't that big deal that humans were just seen as another animal. So they're like, oh, okay, these ones are learning this from them, just like mm -hmm. how people learn this from them. Oh, yeah. There we go. And so it was very kind of like, it's kind of taking the ego away, like science does, um, for better or worse, sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. certainly yeah, 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 not yeah, a definitely. thing. But oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I just work with all kinds of animals. Uh, most of them can kill me. It's kind of fun that way. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, you know, it gives you, it gives you a, a, you got to level up in that sort of environment. Ah, that's, that's where you, where you have yeah. to, that's, again, you can back up, back up your knowledge and your education because it's like, that's what a lot of these people, um, you know, who uh, talk about understanding positive reinforcement and clicker training. And it's like, well, no, go speak to someone like you because you've had to live it where you've got an animal that could potentially kill you. Uh, so, right, you've got timing. You've got you've got to have the understanding because that's literally oh, yeah. pretty much the only tool that you've got at your disposal. All right. So, oh, yeah, because yeah, when I'm working with a gorilla, it's entirely force-free. And that's why I like to say, yeah. like, that's why I say I'm Lima. If someone wants a, a title or a, a thing for me, I say Lima because that's a code of ethics that I do ascribe to. Um, yep. But I was entirely like, and I am entirely force free when I work with primates, um, and when I work mm. with exotic species in zoos or sanctuaries, because yeah, like I can tell a leopard what to fucking do. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, that's gonna right. happen, right? Like that's I can right. tell. So when I would even when I would give like I would spoon feed um, like applesauce sometimes as a reward for the gorillas. And the entire time I'm watching that spoon to make sure they don't take it. Because they will mm. rip that from my finger and possibly take my finger with me. Like they will take the spoon <laughs> from me. Right. And so when you're working on something like that, your click. So that's why I tend to do like click. Yeah. I'll do like a mouth yeah. click or I'll just use an audible yes. I'll go, yes. And I sound, sorry, mm -hmm. Graham. My dog's yeah. right there. Um, that's right. It's and, charged enough. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. You can tell it's charged because Remy's like, what? And I'm like, five yeah. bows. <laughs> that's just hidden. Yeah. I'm weakening my clicker. Um, uh. <laughs> but, you know, like when you have to do something like that, when it's when it's your bread and butter because there's literally no other choice, you really got to work on your timing. And the person that we're both kind of talking around right now is um, doesn't want to hear that. She nah. um, she doesn't like the idea. And she's like, well, the clicker can mean various things. And I was like, yeah, it can, which is why I don't really use a clicker. I mm. use yes. And yes means mm. look at me because a treat's coming. Um, yep. And sometimes when I do, it means back up. Or I'll mm. do different series of clicks for other things. Mm. That whole just lost his shit trying to figure out your yes and where and where it comes from. Oh, did he really? <laughs> Sorry, Gatsby. <laughs> my, ne my ne negative impacts thing. of verbal markers. Yeah, so I've had clients tell me, they're like, I've looked at your YouTube videos or my not, I don't really have so much on YouTube, but like my Instagram videos. And they're like, we hear you playing the yes game with other dogs. And our dog looks at us and goes like, where's the treat? And I'm like, ooh, maybe use headphones. Like, yeah. but also, I'm like, it's, that's charged. Yeah. That is something that, because if it happens to weaken over one or two reps of them hearing a video, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But the yep. fact that the dog is looking for it and I'm like, it's mm. nothing. Cause they're like, Oh, you're just magic. I'm like, no, I'm not magic. No. We've done that together. I'm like magic yeah. just negates the entire thing. Mm. Um, see, hey, Max. Maxi Moonshine says can't watch TikTok without headphones because coming across training videos. Yeah, I bet <laughs> I try to, but my headphones give up half the time. So what's your, what's your history with dog training? We haven't been able to chat before really. Yeah, so I um, basically my first dog was a, a red nosed pit bull, um, and I got him when I was like 19. His name was Caesar, and I got him as I was a little wog boy, wannabe gangster, and that was like the cool dog at the time, right? So, um, uh, 
Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, like, me and all my friends, we all had one. We used to drive around, all that sort of shit, right? And I, we, like, I bought him up totally wrong, using my, oh, I, got, I need a tough dog and this and that, right? So, um, you know, I took him hunting when he was young. We wounded roos, let them go and kill the roos, like all this dumb shit that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, you know, put a, a shitload of, um, I wouldn't even call it proper protection work, but just taught him to respond to pressure through full defensive drives, right? Yeah. Um, and and didn't really build the rest of the dog around that. So I built a dog that ended up just wanting to go nuts at everybody and everything, um, yeah. except for those that were very close in his environment. And then I went to multiple trainers um, across two states in because I lived in different states, um, board and trains, group classes, private consults, all this sort of stuff. And no one actually gave me anything to work with, right? They came, they did a session, they told me to work with it, but it wasn't working, right? The board and train was like, now from what I know was nothing but a compulsion crank and yank camp, right? So I still remember going back because we had to do some group sessions after the board and train. Um, And like, he's he was a a, a fawn, fawn pity with a white chest and like his neck was red right red and welted right so this is like choke oh. chains right we, we call them choke chains here i don't know what you yeah. call them but a metal slip lead yeah. right um and, and like these guys were like oh he's not sitting boom hang the dog right hang the dog till he sits bang. Uh, you know it was it was the it was basically oh he'll pop pop on the lead, right? You're correcting the dog before you've even started, right? And um, I was like, okay, yeah. So, you know, with the type of dog that he was, he just rebelled against all of that shit. Opposition reflex comes into play and he's like, nah, fuck this. And what I know now is like, if I knew what I knew now, he'd be an awesome dog, right? The the, the temperament that he had naturally, his nerves, right? And like all of that stuff, I just messed him up. So then again, with my thought process, human thought process and emotion, I was like, oh, well, I'll get a puppy. He'll learn to love the puppy and then he'll generalize that to the rest of the world. Um, So I went and got my first German Shepherd puppy and he had a muzzle pretty much for all interactions for the first week. And it wasn't even close. It was just like same room type stuff. Um, And the first week he was, he was going good. So he was inside laying on the couch next to me and um, he was, he, he was fine. The puppy was sleeping on my chest. I was like, oh, I'll go give him some chicken. Hey, Caesar, have some chicken. And the puppy woke up and went to sniff the chicken and he just latched onto her, started throwing her around the room. Um, so Oof. she was like nine weeks old. He like punctured straight through her muzzle. Um, I, I got bitches from trying to rip him off. I like dragged him. This is after like maybe three years of a very toxic relationship. He was six. Yeah. I ended up putting him down at six, right? Um, but he, he was just nuts. He was, he was like, he's a cool dog one-on-one, but... I would come home because I own some nightclubs in Adelaide, right? So I work nightclubs late, come home from work at like seven in the morning and the electric gates to the house would open and uh, there would be no Caesar in the yard. I'd be like, where is this dog? So, and he would be gone for three days. And then like three days later, I'd come home from work and I would open the gates. He would just be staring in the headlights like, oh, you're back, right? Like, what are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, like he, he was nuts, right? So then I started, oh I, I started chaining, chaining him up when I went to work. I'd get calls from my neighbors at like two in the morning, like, um, your dog's hanging over our fence, right? I was like, uh, if you could just like push him over because I'm at work, right? Oh okay, so the chain, the chain doesn't work. So I, I oh tried electric fence, electric fence and collar. And he would just walk up. I did all the training on the box and it came with a little DVD, did all that training. And mm-hmm. he would just walk into it and he would be, he would be getting done from the, from the collar. And he was just standing there like, what am I doing? Right. He was just, like just taking it. Oh my name. gosh. Yeah. And, oh my um, gosh. you know, yeah. I had the, um, the council ranger used to drive past my house two or three times a week to make sure he was in the yard. It was just a mess. Right. So when he attacked that dog, uh, my, my puppy, that was, you know, one of many attacks that he'd had and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. So it was, it was the end of the, the line. And, you know, I, I yeah. copped a lot of flack because I share my story on Facebook through my business profile and all the haters yeah. come on. Oh, you're a shit trainer. Like you put your dog oh. down, you didn't rehome it, all this sort of stuff. And I was like, well, to be honest, I couldn't put that burden onto someone because someone like the person we we're talking about before would be like, Oh, I can save every dog with hug- hugs and kisses. All it needs is love. Yeah. And then some baby gets bit in the face. 
And then I'm like, got to deal with that. So I was like, you know what? It is what it is. It was a very hard decision to make, but I did it. And yeah. then the next day I started learning about dogs all I could. Because yeah. I was like, now I've got a, a nine-week-old puppy who's going to have an issue with dogs, which is like the last thing I want. Uh, yeah. Again, human emotion came into play. So I went and got another German yeah. Shepherd puppy. And I bought two two dogs up at, at once. And like I've been studying wow. now and learning for the last 10 years, right? Nice. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, we all, we all start awesome. somewhere. And I have a lot of respect for you for sharing that story because – yeah, it's not a nice beginning. It, not everyone has nice, happy sunshine. I went to school. I did this and that, blah, 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 which is great. Like, that's that's what I did. But also, I can tell you my first um, mentors when I was, you know, back in 1997, they were mm. compulsive as fuck. Now, mm. I didn't know it at the time, but no. 1997, it was very good. Now I look back and I'm like, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. that. We were training therapy horses and therapy dogs, and it was compulsive. Never yeah. mind, like, bike work stuff, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And so I have a lot of respect for that. And also, so we were talking in my live earlier about quality of life. And I was talking about um, Anya, who was a case that I worked with. And she was one of the, the handful of dogs that I have re recommended for behavioral euthanasia. Because mm. her quality of life was suffering. Her human's mm. quality of life was suffering. And it was getting to the point where she was a multiple bite risk or she had multiple bite successes. Um, yeah. Not responding to medication, not responding to training, not like, I mean, she responded some, but there was always a level of like when she was a ticking time bomb. And mm. so, yeah, you can rehome that maybe, but then what, she's yeah. going to live in a crate her entire life or maybe a kennel yeah. run. Like what yeah. kind of life is that for her to where then she's still going crazy, 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 crazy. And then as soon as you go into feeder, she's going to try to rip off your arm. Mm. Like, I, I just think that in that in that whole rehoming, you know, unfortunately, don't get me wrong, there's, there are some people out there that genuine, genuinely understand the work that is involved and they go yeah. to help those dogs because that's their mission in life. But from yeah. my experience, the most people that or clients that I've had that have been, I've got a rescue dog. It was a bait dog. It was, uh, you know, it was it was abused. Right. And they sort of tell themselves these stories like nearly every mm -hmm. rescue person that i've spoken to or someone that's rescued they've either been a yeah. bait dog or an abused dog right yeah. and and well, and that's the rescue, they're, they're honestly, saving that, the yeah. world right through yeah. emotion well, and it doesn't work like that it's 100 percent the rescues that do that and so i used to work a lot with rescues um i would be mm. the behaviorist or behavior specialist that they would call in um like i worked in chicago when i was working at the zoo there and then i was there for a while uh training dogs and we did have fight ring dogs but I can tell you those fight ring dogs didn't go to the shelter. They came to me and they came mm -hmm. to me and my colleagues because they were not, they would have killed dogs at the shelter. It would have been yeah, another yeah. fight ring. Um, and yeah. so when people are like, I have a fight ring dog, I have a bait yeah. dog. I'm like, if you have a bait dog, they're <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. Not a <laughs> you know, and I was able to get some of these uh, fight ring dogs. I had a few that became therapy dogs that became even service dogs. And most became, or a good number of them became wonderful pets. Yeah. And that's great. But I never told a single adopted hu or human that adopted them what this dog's history was. I never said that mm. this dog was from a fight ring on the south side that I was brought in with the cops to break up. Because the cops yeah. got in there and they could not get these dogs out. Yeah. I wasn't going to tell the humans that. Instead, I was like, they were from the streets of the south side. That's yeah. all you ought to know. That's it. Um, but yeah. rescues that I worked with would make these sob stories because sob stories, unfortunately, bring in donations. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like, we just had a huge rescue, probably the biggest rescue besides what well, we have the RSPCA would be, I mm -hmm. don't know what yours is in America, but RSPCA is like our national um, yeah. animal wel welfare division. Yeah, um, most, most of the, the families in England are Ireland. So, yeah. You what? Oh, yeah, of I said, course. Yeah, families same, in England, same. Ireland, and Australia, so I know the RSPCA. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's right. So, yeah. like, they, uh, the biggest one outside of that, they just got done for um, basically embezzling money from, from the, the, the shelter um, yeah. because they, they were like, and I even did some work with some um, foster parents or, or helpers of the shelter who were paying out of their own pocket to train dogs to help them get rehomed because, oh, like, the shelter was just like keeping these dogs. They would be like, okay, well, if you want this dog, then you need seven foot fences. Okay. And I tell you that the standard fence height in any council in Australia is six foot. So who yeah. just normally has a seven foot fence? I was going to no say, one, I think right? ours are like four foot here. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Right. 
oh, but this dog is a fence jumper because it wants to go searching for its humans. I was like, no, no, no. Maybe it's just not fulfilled and it's bored as fuck at home and it wants to go out on an yeah. exploration, right? Maybe it's also <laughs> training. Yeah, yeah not, so it's just, it was just for humans. This is not homeward bound here. Like, we are not. Yeah, yeah, ugh. yeah. Uh, that's funny i was watching that movie just the other month with my son yeah good movie it's a weirdly uh, good movie yeah i was watching it with my nephew and he was like aunt shell did you train these dogs because now that's his new question is every time because he asked me how many dogs i trained and i was like nathan i stopped counting at three thousand he's like that's a lot of dogs and i was like thank you and now he goes did you train that one did you train that one i'm like nathan i didn't train every dog like i've trained no dogs on tv that's yeah Oh, I'm not. I'm nowhere near there. Look, I'm still compared to you. I'm. I'm a baby, right? So, um, yeah. back back to sort of my, yeah. my history is that after that dog, I had those two shepherds, and I was a hobbyist. I was a hobbyist up until you know three, uh, yeah, probably about three years ago, right? So I had a bit of a uh, uh, a life crisis, and that sort of put me into like life coaching and all this sort of stuff. And through life mm-hmm. coaching, I found out that like I absolutely love training dogs it just it was my passion yeah. right so like why not make money from your passion or, or turn your hobby into something you can earn a living through um yeah. and uh i, I went back and i, I did a, a cert three in animal behavior and um nice. training uh, and and started my business and and covid was actually i started it probably six months before covid and covid mm-hmm. just like boom projectiled my, my business right? through the roof because everyone was like home with their crappy untrained dogs <laughs> and they're like can't put up with this anymore yeah. yeah so and then after about 12 months of doing that um i was like i'm sick of driving around so i'm opening a facility um and i've got you know like a a, a 300 square meter warehouse which uh, oh. i don't know the conversion to feet you guys are all in feet uh, but i, I know think meters. yeah probably about it's yeah big. okay there you go yeah. <laughs> you're, you're educated enough um, but so 300 square meter warehouse which I, I again predominantly opened because my my interest is in working dogs and protection dogs right I, ever since i was four years old like because we had history in nightclubs in adelaide we've always had sort of pretty serious dogs at home yeah. and um we had it was time to get a new dog so we went and checked out back in the the 90s it was dobies and ruddies that were all the thing right so oh, and yeah. i still remember i would have been maybe six or seven years old seeing my first dogs flying across the field to take someone out and then that same dog coming and me walking it on leash and telling it to sit and then my sister calling that dog and it it not going i was just fascinated by the whole thing and i think it lit a fire from back then um and and that's what i want my my neighbors were getting sick of me training my dog at home having it on the back tie in the yard and you know barking and going nuts and Mm -hmm. i've got a video i should try and find this video so I can put it up. It's like me doing some decoy work in the front yard before I put a front fence up. And my neighbor from across the road is going to go check her letterbox. And she's like this 80 year old lady on a walking frame, you know, hunched over walking. And my dog's on a back tie. Bah, bah, bah. So I'm walking around with a whip and a sleeve. And it's just open to everyone to see. And I was just like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, it's time. I got a facility to, um, to open and that's called Dog Club. All my oh, businesses that I own are very simple. We have a dog That's club, right? Awesome. Dog club. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's nice and straight to the point. And, and what I do with pet dogs now is I kind of was sick of, like, and you may be the same, but you get a lot of churn with pet dogs. Like, people come in looking for the quick fix. Oh, no, I don't want to put in the time. Then they sort of back out. Um, mm-hmm. So then it's like, okay, so now I've created the school with the hard knocks course. And that goes for six months, right? So anyone that wants to train with me, they join the the next intake of that course and it's six months worth of training. If you want to put me and my my business name to your dog's training, that's that's the entry level, right? Love and that. then past that point, you um, you want to do more, get into sports. Me and some friends are in the process of starting a sport dog club, right? We're, we will give you all of that stuff, right? That, that, and, oh. and open doors to that. Um, but as a base, it's six months. It's basically two sessions a week because um, there's a theory component um, mm-hmm. and then a tutorial of the practical. So then they can start playing with it themselves. And then when they come in for their actual uh, in-person session or it's a small group, they all get time on the floor. We do two rounds around the room. They come out mm-hmm. and they get one-on-one coaching in that time. But also oh. what I've been finding is that I don't need to worry about trying to film clients to watch back because they're watching other people do it. 
right? Yeah. So when they see me coaching on the same mistakes they're making, oh, that's what he means by that, right? So we learn yeah. in a small group environment. Um, and people sort of keep each other accountable and they make friends and it's just a bit more better. So That's cool, um, yeah, because you have a nice social aspect to it. I love it. Someone wrote, yeah. what happens at dog club, lol. And I was like, yes, what happens at dog club? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Uh, the, the rule on my on my welcome emails, the first rule with dog club is to tell everyone about dog club. Yes, <laughs> right? I love that. <laughs> right? Yeah, so I think that's um, amazing. And I love that because you're, you're meeting the um, – the audible learners, you're meeting the visual learners, you're meeting the kinesthetic yeah. learners, you're meeting the social yeah. learners um, by doing it in that kind of format. That's really awesome. Yeah, yeah thank so cool. you. I mean, we we started the second intake this week. I've just opened up uh, for, I'm opening two more sessions next month, or two more groups. Um, but yeah, the feedback's been awesome, right? The the clients are, are making progress. You know, we're, we're doing a, a block now of, uh, we're free shaping the dog to hold a pipe so that we can teach the dog the out, right? So nice. simple process. Each each week is basically set up to complement the last and set up for the mm -hmm. next, right? So uh, they're getting a full understanding of the theory. Um, and then really they just have to go, uh, go home for the next week and implement one more thing, right? Implement yeah. one more thing. And, and what I was finding in the area or, or where I'm from anyway, and it's probably generalized to the world of dog training is, People get seduced by this. Oh, come and do my obedience course. It's four weeks long or five weeks long. And mm -hmm. sure, you're going to be overwhelmed with all this information and think, oh, my God, this is God's gift to the world. This is yeah. my Messiah, right? But what are you going to do after that five weeks? All that stuff is just going to go straight out the back. Yeah, you're, you're not going to have a, a full understanding, right? So I'm conditioning my clients as I would yeah. expect to condition a dog, right? So I'm conditioning and training them into behaviors that is not... Yeah. Uh, natural to them, right? Or the understanding. Yeah. So I took my approach on dog training to use to my clients, right? Why would I think that I could train you all of this stuff in four weeks when it's going to take the dog months for you to get any oh, any exactly. sort of reliability? Yeah, I absolutely so. love that because it's it's literally what I say with training both ends of the leash. Um, because so many times we apply all the people will talk very cerebrally or very scientific and very advanced, which I'm sorry, if you can't talk, if you can't break down your system to a third grader, then you don't actually comprehend whatever it is. Like that's, yeah. that's it. Right. Um, yeah. And so people, when they use all these big words and stuff, I'm like, great, you can inundate and barrage someone with all of these science words. I'm like, I can do it. I do it all the time with statistics mm. when I think I'm going to lose an argument. And I'm like, let's talk yeah. about your variables. <laughs> and then yeah. I'm just like, it's um my mentor actually was saying he's like are you the youngest child in your family and I was like yes I have an older brother and a twin sister who's three minutes older than me he's like yeah it shows in your statistics and I was like oh yeah. fuck <laughs> uh, he's like here are my graphs bitch and like yeah yeah um <laughs> but when you do all of that but you can barrage someone with it but then what are they gonna do three months six months a year down the line especially mm. if their life changes if the dog like as the dog changes with age or different kinds of like you know different states whatever it is hey sonia yeah. um then the dog's gonna have those problems but what i do is i tell my clients i'm like i'm here for lifelong support but mm. you i don't want you to need me yeah i'm like i'm always a text away i'm always a phone call away but i was like but my goal is that we're done and then mm. if you want to come with like, hey, I want to do dog sport. I want to do agility. I want to do fly yeah. ball. I want to do whatever. Then great. We have more goals. I want my dog to get me a beer from the fridge. Awesome. I love chaining behaviors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. if we're still working on like, I don't want my dog to bark at the door because you've mm. moved from an apartment to a townhouse. Yeah. No, that's, that means that <laughs> I, I fail. That means I fail. And you see that yeah. all the time with people. Um, yeah. because the people will apply or the trainers will apply training to the dogs, but not use those same methods with the humans. And yeah. I'm like, they also learn via operant conditioning, via classical conditioning, via, mm -hmm. you know, counter conditioning. Like that's it, the conditioning works on both ends of the leash. Yeah. hundred percent. But... And like, you know, it's, it's the same going all the way back to my, my first dog was like, it was just, if I'm going to come into this industry, I need to give it what I didn't have. I need to fill the holes yeah. where I was failed and going and seeing what is out there. I mean, there's some great trainers where I'm from, but there's a lot of shit trainers too, right? You know, and most yeah. of them are just going out there either full of emotion or, you know, yeah. old school compulsion and no one is really <laughs> yeah. keeping up to date. I could probably count 
three trainers in my whole state. We're only a small state, 1.2 or 3 million people and three mm-hmm. dog trainers that are actually at that high level, right? That we're continuously learning and educating yeah. and bringing the latest from around the world yeah. to what we got here, you know? Yeah. And, um, and then on those three would have different scales of who's actually giving their all to <laughs> as much education, but like, you're going to get good shit from all three of them, right? It's all good. One yeah. is more, so one's more aligned to like, you know, uh, Ivan Bal- Balabanov training without conflict. You know, I'm very yeah. much like Nepo Po style of training. Um, the other one started more so Nepo Po, but now is going a bit more positive only style of training, you know, but mm-hmm. still having compulsion there as a tool if it's needed, right? So all of this yeah. sort of stuff um, comes into play, but it, it's, it's just awesome. Like I, I wanted to give people something that they can actually leave saying, holy shit, yeah, I don't need you anymore, but I want you, right? I don't want my exactly. clients to need me. I want them to want me and, and to say, okay, yeah. so yeah, like you said, where is the next step from here? And like, yeah. by all means, after that six months course, you're not going to have a trained dog, but what you're going to have is the tools and the understanding to create mm-hmm. behavior and to problem solve when something arises, right? Like you said, you yeah. don't have to call me because your dog's barking at the door, all right? Yeah. Um, you already know how to fix that. And now you just want to further your education and I can lead you on that path, definitely. Yeah, I'm right? like, I've been doing this for like 15 plus years and I'm constantly learning new things. So when my train or when my clients, my students are like, oh, well, what's next? I'm like, oh, I got a fucking world for you. And I'm like, yeah. they don't ever need to become trainers, but I'm like, we can do any number of things. I was like, we can do weird stuff around your house. We can do, uh, you can do a Spartan race, like running a, you know, a marathon or something with your dog. We can do yep. various sports with your dog. I'm like, I can just train your dog to herd your children if you want it to, but like in a nice way. <laughs> like I, I did that literally. I can train the dog to clean up after your children. Like we've done all yep. kinds of cool stuff, but I'm like, but you need these foundations. Like I had one client today who messaged me and, um, we worked, I have like these three dogs that they, or they have these three dogs that I've worked with each of them in different ways. Um, and one of them needs, uh, fluids, uh, like about every three days for, uh, I think her kidneys or something. Um, and so it's just like subcutaneous fluids. And so we did some various things. They call it coconut because the dog's name is peanut. And they're like, Hey, they're like, Shelly, you're going to be mad at us because we stopped doing our coconut, like our fake training trials. And we just tried to go right for it. And we know what we did. And they told me, they laid out. They're like, this is what we did wrong. This is what we should have done. This is what we're going to do now. And so I just responded back. I'm like, yep. Great. Good job. (laughs) Like, do it. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Go on. Sorry. Yeah. They had all the tools. um, (laughs) Go, you go. You finish. No, no, your turn. Yeah. I was just saying, like, I saw a, a video of a trainer uh the other day on 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 tiktok and he was like oh how do you deal with imposter syndrome right and and i'm like i think that we deal with imposter syndrome we we only trying to fool ourselves right because i I go through that from time to time i'm like am i really delivering what my clients need and are they really getting it and all this sort of stuff and then you come to a new forum and you meet other people and like me sitting here with you i'm like fuck i don't know shit about dog training or or animal training right and and like you know what i mean like there's so there's always people above and i always say i like to keep myself being uh the idiot in a room full of geniuses rather than a genius in a room full of idiots right? right so that yeah, right. So that, that's sort of my methodology. But it, it hit home the other day when uh, one of my clients sent me a video. He was walking his dog. Um, they're like four weeks into their course. And he's like, oh, can you tell me what's going on here? And I was like, well, we just did operant conditioning a couple of weeks ago. So tell me, negative reinforcement is X. Mm-hmm. Let me put the video up in our group on Facebook and let's see what everyone comes back with, right? So, and there was a few people spat out some answers that were more so talking about the positive reinforcement. Um, and, and then within three comments, bang, this, the dog, uh, the, the, the human is being negatively reinforced because the dog's putting pressure on, they're stopping. And then the human is moving forward to the dog. And I was like, fuck, right. That's awesome. Ah! Right? They actually understand the concept of negative reinforcement. It took me years to understand that concept and because it was just like the other end of the le- Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah. And then, like, oh, yeah, the dog's being positively reinforced because they're stopping, but then they get to go and the dog's not changing its behavior. And I was like, no shit. Right. Like, and, and you just don't understand until something like that happens. Like, yeah, sweet. Like, what I'm teaching is getting through. 
right? And we can ask. And then like, even when I ask clients, so are you happy with the service? Do you want to write a review? And then you're like, did they just write that review because they felt compelled to write the yes. review? Did they feel like I put them on the spot, right? And <laughs> like, you just, all this stuff goes in your head. Uh, yeah, but the, then, you know, I feel like the business like side, like the business side and the dog trainer side mm. tend to be in competition. Because the business side's like, you need that review. But then you're like, but do they actually like me? You know, it's like the angel exactly. devil on the shoulder thing. But yeah, I yeah, love yeah. That. And the fact that you have your students and you're setting up a forum and a platform for your students to support and help each other where mm. it's positive reinforcing for them, but it's also positive reinforcing for you because you're the one who taught them all that shit in the first place. Yeah. yeah so that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, oh, nah, I love it's that. good. It's good. Nah, so <laughs> it's, it's coming, it's coming along nicely. And like, I just setting it up in a way so that, um, you know, my main goal, I've got a Malinois coming in September and, nice. um, you know, my German Shepherd now, she's been sort of my my first working dog um, mm -hmm. or, you know, working breed at a working level, right? So yeah. she's been my, my training dog for that. The Malinois is coming from like a, a military breeder. So yes. that dog's going to take me to another step higher because that's going to be more so for personal protection and working applications. My German mm -hmm. Shepherd, she's got what it takes to be a sporting dog, but would I trust her with my life? Probably not, right? She's a bit sensitive <laughs> yeah. to that. Uh, if there was some guy tried to rob me on the street and she had to like it was one one against two or two against two but if it was like i was in a security situation and there was a group of 10 she'd probably be like yeah she nah, fuck that. <laughs> she'd Bye, Dad. Right? I'm so, gone. <laughs> yeah so i mean like I, I love her i don't i don't talk bad about it she's but you know great, where but, her limitations um, are and that's really yeah. important um i worked with one of my mentors so i haven't done too much protection work but i've done some and i love it like there is nothing like the adrenaline rush you get when you're in a bite suit and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> like it's wild. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But one of my and mentors. I was on a buzz for that. two days. The oh, first yeah. First time I got bit by a dog, my, my adrenaline, it was almost like I was back in the club scene having a party night, right? Like I was, I was on a rush, right? Oh, yeah. On a rush. And it wasn't even ascending, it was just the dog standing in front of me and I just had my hand, whoop, right there. Yeah, right? But like the pressure, the adrenaline, like, yeah, well, and the fact nah. that you're like, this should be hurting a lot. And then you're like, but it doesn't, yeah. though. Like, I mean, nah, it's not comfortable. It feels good. <laughs> yeah, but you're like, ah! Yeah, it's like the weird <laughs> your brain's like, I should die, but I'm not. This yeah. is amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. It's like a roller coaster where you're like, this should be death, right? No? Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But yeah, my mentor that's who taught me sweet. a lot of amazing stuff about protection work, I, I lost a fair bit of respect from him because he, he wanted a, a new protection dog, right? And so he's looking for these puppies but he wanted the male, but he ended up picking out of this entire litter. He picked the one male and we both went together and we temperature tested these dogs and the male was nothing. He was the biggest drama wussy. He was like yeah. barely, but like nothing. And the females yeah. were fucking killing it. The females yeah, were on yeah. point like for this particular litter. Um, yeah. And he took the male what home. What breed? A German Shepherd. Okay, but, yeah. And we had a, a coworker who took one of the females um, and the females ended up like, so my coworker who had one of the females, Layla, she ended up being a monster. She was amazing. She did an awesome bite work. She ended up doing like competition, sporting, like protection work, all kinds of stuff. Atlas, yep. the male ended up getting rehomed to a companion dog family. Cause he did bite work <laughs> yeah. a little bit, but then he like, he would yeah. do it like tough where he's like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're teaching yeah. a behavior. There's no heart for the for the heart. Exactly. You know, he right? would do yeah. tug. Like I've worked with like Maltese dogs who would do tug harder than Atlas did. Like it was yeah. the worst. <laughs> and I was sitting there, I just remember like going up to my mentor and I was like, So you really wanted the male, huh? <laughs> like Yeah, yeah. And like it's fine. There's nothing against like there's no gender or sex or anything like wrong. But it was more of like the temperament wasn't right. And I was like, you can't pick a yeah, dog really based on like what you have in your head. I'm like, nah. you got to pick the dog that's best fitted. And it was just the funniest thing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure I can learn a bunch from you about protection work. Cause I just haven't, I haven't done much. And that was, that was my mentor in protection. So like, I take everything he taught me now with a mountain of salt because I'm like, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, if, that yeah, was yeah. Your, if that was your choice at the end of the day, yeah. how refined were you in your task? But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, like, yeah, I've, like I said, I've, it's all, all been learning curve over the last couple of years. And um, yeah, that's, that's really the next, the next part. And, and hopefully this dog gets it. My girl is going to start whinging now. Um, but uh, 
yeah, it's good. And like every day, I learn something new. You know, yesterday, nice. um, I'm, I'm on free shaping bandwagon at the moment because I'm just like, I, I didn't okay. do enough as, as um, a puppy with my girl. So the next mm -hmm. dog is going to be free shaped everything at an early stage. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I did a live yesterday of free shaping my girl to walk up agility dog walk. Holly, uh, plank walk. Mm -hmm. um and you know she she'd never been up on that before it took me 17 minutes to free shape her over it and uh it's it's all it's all been really fun just like getting a, knowing that the puppy's coming and having to uh <clears throat> start preparing and and you know thinking about yeah. what i'm going to do for that and all that sort of stuff so it keeps it interesting yeah. that's for sure i absolutely love free shaping i think it's it's such a cool and underutilized aspect Ollie, wake up. Sorry, he fell asleep mm. and then had a yeah. dream <laughs> and got mad. <laughs> hey, wake up. Hi, what's up, buddy? Hey, you're okay. The monster. Puppy dream. Yeah, no, man. it's cool. It's my cool. I like definitely right got a big, um, big respect, uh, especially watching stuff like the, um, there's a video of the hyena that they do the blood draw from the neck, right? All just like, you got to free shape yeah. that shit. That would take ages, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, That's what yeah. you so, yeah, just... cuff. I would do blood draws and bl blood pressure cuffs from like a 400, uh, 500 pound gorilla. Just like stick their yeah. arm out through a PVC tube. And the whole time yeah. you're like, they can fucking break this PVC. Yeah. And their arm, is out of the, <laughs> their arm is out of the cage, right? Like out of the yeah. enclosure going through this PVC yeah. sleeve, but the whole time you're like, all he has to do is just this and it's going to break the PVC. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, just wait for this blood draw. It's totally cool. Um, but you have to free shape <laughs> that the entire thing. And I, I love it, but it is, um, it's not easy, yeah. but it really helped me refine my timing. And a lot of yeah. it's because when you have to capture that really precise moment of like, you are a millisecond closer to what I actually want. You know, yeah. Um, or when you see the animal start to actually like pick up on the pattern, that's I think my favorite part. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what she was like. As she got up to the top of the first plank yesterday, and she's like, "Is it me moving forward that's getting me this?" And it's like one step at a time, one step at a time. After yeah. the first time, she's like, "Oh fuck, I got it now!" Bang, back over, back I, over, back over. So, yes, yeah, just I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so. My favorite. Apart from that, I've been doing a lot of Frisbee lately. Frisbee is good fun, right? I had someone introduce me to that like a month ago. And yeah. um, if you ever want to see how much like the handler is letting the team down, go and play Frisbee, right? Because the dog oh, yeah. is there I'm, and it's like... Oh, that's oh, why I haven't done Frisbee with Remy because he yeah. can catch it. Like we play catch it all the time where I just throw stuff at him and he can catch it. Yeah. But it's like his plush toys and different things. Because I know if we're out in a field and we do Frisbee... I'm the one that's going to fail. Like, I'm not going to be as good for him. And so he'll be ready yeah. to catch it. But he's going to be like, Mom, that was in the fucking ground. Do better. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I feel I really gotta... bad. And like, everyone at the, at the Oval or the park, they're like him. I'm like, I'm sorry, Tira. I fucked up again. Like, I yell it out to him. I'm like, shit throw. Sorry. Everyone's like, what is this guy on crack? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, 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 we'll finally get one. I'll be like, sweet, start clapping. Come on, right? And it's just it's yeah. like trick shots, obviously. It is trick shots, but like when you get it, it's like we we're both in unison. Perfect throw from me, perfect run from you. Right. Like, yes, like awesome, right? So what? that's uh, that's been fully addictive, really, really good. She's starting yeah. to winch. But anyway, uh, look, yeah. I have to I have to run because my battery's yeah, about to run out. To. It's really well, good it having good a chat. With you. Thanks for yeah, you too. We'll uh, definitely catch up on here again soon, and uh, we'll uh, continue to follow each other's stuff anyway. Yeah, appreciate definitely. the time. Have a good rest of your day. I'm going to uh, go sure to bed. Will. Yeah, have <laughs> a good one. No worries. Talk again. See ya. Bye. Yeah.